abusu ya fuwa miti eche obibi yara. Akwa laanya me, ena mwensa haka nisesi ya yai. Mala ma akwa laanya mina wuti ni dino. Mina mwensa haka misesi ya ano. Mina mida pangsoba, spiritual and herbal center ano. Ya rie biya, eh unkono. Anase wwe chinya 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 abre. Bibiti se apatitis, bibiti se stroke. Stroke diye, eboni pa kura tuto form na wentime nkasa kura na masha wa 3 days. Masu ya ye uba menjisika. Tiye miye, masu ya ye uba menjisika. Na minu uba kwa apam, unhu towa, asidebi wa kwa na wadi yaba. Bemba diye, adie becheno, esese wa hii ni sori jina honu mu street. Emi se ubi ati maase. Na sa adie na sori ya njine street diya, na ye problem. Enu wani se uwa US, uwa UK, uba biya uwa biya no. Uba fami nomba. Enu negua siya, nina wadi ya fremi. Anase ubaba masu ya ye. Wutu ukwain, sa wu kwa kwa pebi bidi ya bafiye. Wukwa ya krata sema, juma sema. Chira sa wuna uda kura na usunsum daye basa, basa, basa. Anuwa ni sa ubefa pangsoba nomba no. Na wa afreme, wu afreme insu wa wansabe kame. Mekansi subyo, uba masuye ya minjisika. Anuwa ni sa minu ube kwa pam, unhuto wa na wadi asida edi ya ba. Awuwa sem, awuwa sem. Uwe ube timanya sika wa ubotom. Ne mwamu awuwa ntino. Wambe ti iti usama wun wunu babi ya ubesi. Wude di ebe yane se freme. Anase brema asu ya ye. Ne yen tira use. Yadi ahahay ene esa yari ya wahanu mo. Yabu uruwa 2024 muwana asofo esha asye esha nkom. Mala mfonso so esha asye esha nkom. Ena akonfonso esha asye esha nkom. Eni akomse fondo mado suye pa. Uye sore MPP nebe wini. Uye sore NDC nebe wini. Uye sore ya wini nebeko. Uye sore ebe yesei. Eni percentage nyine bimu e mebi. Bimu di kenten. Ete radio ni TV so e chere se. Kenten ni chan hukubu nkuma nase ni fa. Eni beche se asume se anaswa binti be wini. Ibi mu susu kuta Bible. Aye fro mu susu Bible no kwa fo. En susu se. Se Bible no kubu nkum. Ana ni fa. Eni eni asume si. Ana so obentin. Eni be wini. Chese ni eko kwa suwa. Ewo Radio Suri TV Sudiye. Eye bibiribi. Chese enya afini. Eba beka achere mo. Mo ba obi mfu radio wa. Edini nina ebi ema mo. Ye mfa enka me mo. Edini nina asum mo. Osum pa. Eni osum kwa pa eso. Na ene. Die eko bi mu. Eye Global Info Analytics. Na che se, wana, wansu tumidu wana eni etoto fom, edi wana son etoto fom, e kaka, e shwe wye moun sakraye, e shwe e nye ma anan, e sema eni pan e keka, e wo omeni mu, e bisu kura fe e che ye interviews. No ma wun se debi, a, e kwe ye interview wa hano, e dodo anasi seyi, anasi a dodo anasi seyi, e no, e na omo e bovra, e ye bunu ist, e omo bovra bunu ist no, e nye ma e kwa suwa, nye e chre nina, e se bunu ist diye, e ye NDC, Eye chere, yura, don domani mahama, wane ehuri edi kain. Na uhuri di kain ya, na uhuri di kain, eko nya 56%, 56,56. Sa, nsoso, ena, eye, Dr. Mahamad Baumia, nsoso, eko nya 26%. Nese ni siko yue yene diye, mu mienti, enfemfuru umho, esan se, omu se niyama miensa pa, eno mu jina aso, ede shwe ye, niyama miensa no mu bako, eye ekonomi no, ane se ni omaye ni mu edene, se ni omaye ni mu si kasem esi tiye, omu yue ye, eno mu kwa shwe, omaye no engu mesu ya, enso so, eso, omu shwe omaye engu mesu ya, enso so, eno so, ewa percentage ya, eko nya ye, sa an su na omaye no, ejuma sem, eti sen, ejuma sem, eti sen, ni nina ano, ya di e bre mu, na ye chire mu se, aha, ayo benfo radio, aha, ene ne pano, ya wo edema mu, inti, ni e ope, anase di unya ya, nka ube ti, anase ni unye ti ya, nka ope, anase ni unya shwe ya, nka ope no, aha, ni edini nina e bre mu, enu ti, di ene chi, u di ene chi, su di ene chi, se, o subscribe, na ye di ne peni nina, e di a bre mu, mo mi anko, ni anko ti, global info analytics, no, se ni enema, e si ye den, e kwa ye. Let's look a bit more, the details as captured, in this particular report, uh, in terms of voting intentions, the Bono East region right now, based on this poll by Global Info Analytics, is giving John Mahama some 56%, Dr. Baumia 26%, Nana Kwame Biliako 9%, and then Alan Chairman team 6%. If it's broken down uh, into the constituencies as well, the NDC out of the four is leading in three with Techiman South interestingly currently being held by local government minister uh, now 
He is in a comfortable lead in that regard. Let's speak to Musa Dankwa, the Executive Director of Global Info Analytics, on these latest numbers that we're seeing. Mr. Dankwa, I appreciate that you could speak to us always. Uh, let's talk to what could be influencing the numbers that we're seeing. Having read uh, the poll, it does appear that 56% is inching close to what John Mahama gained uh, during the 2020 elections. And so a fair representation of what the voting intentions have been since 2020, you'd say? Yes, thank you very much for having me. Yes, um, if you look at what is driving the polling numbers, if you look at Bruno East, the top three issues for voters there, it is economy, with 58% of the mentioning was economy, followed by education, 55% of the mentions were education, and jobs, 53% of the mentions were jobs. So nationally, the same issue, the economy, jobs, and education, that is driving people's voting intention. And indeed, if you look at how Mahama is doing in the consequences, uh, in those consequences poll, you could see that he remained largely flat compared to the actual results from the elections in 2020. However, Dr. Baumir has dropped from where the other was in 2020 to now 26%, almost 12% um, uh, or so drop or, uh, from from when another was part, quite bigger than that. And the drop went to Nanakwan Bidiaku and Arangela Martin and others in the region. So you could see that uh, Baumia's drop from the polls actually went to his uh, other MPP affiliates, which is Arangela Martin and Nanakwan So the presence of the two continues to affect the votes of, uh, of Dr. Baumia based off on a number of polls that we've seen you conduct over the, over the course of the past few weeks and months. Let's talk the, the parliamentary seats as well. Four sampled, three in, in favor of, of the NDC so far. And interestingly, Techiman South, uh, Jamin Sakosa is, is leading uh, in that particular poll. What could be accounting for what appears to be a very commanding lead in Techiman South? Um, he is outperforming his party in the constituency. Jamin Sakosa receives the backing of nearly 20% of NDC voters. And we have seen this consistently. Any MP that gets 15 to 20% of NDC voters tends to do well. And it's amongst one of them. That we have seen across the country. So once you are able to divide the front of NDC and you want the incumbent MPP MP, you survive. So he's divided the opinion considering what was witnessed in 2020 in that particular constituency where lives were lost. It makes for an interesting reading. Do we know why he continues to be the most preferred also from, from the side of the NDC? Um, from what we've heard from the sources on the ground, you know, when we, we speak to them, they tell us a lot, but not many of the things can find itself to report. Mm. Apparently, it's a very generous person. And he doesn't really uh, say that you are MPP or NDC. So probably he knew that he had a problem with the way he won the elections, and he had to make an effort to, to kind of uh, make amends. And from the poll that we have seen, I think that is working towards his favor. And for the others, we've seen, uh, like in Prue East, the presence of an independent candidate as well. How does that play out in terms of the dynamics come uh, December 7? Does it tilt this in the favor of the incumbent or uh, the, the governing New Patriotic Party just at the long run might nick it? I think if you look at Prue East, it's likely to be a contest between uh, the NDC, Kukubua, and then Felix Kwabunani Mapo, the independent candidate. I'm not quite sure which uh, front he comes from, but I can, I don't know it's MPP or it's from NDC. But if you look at the, the race at the moment, the NDC candidate is, is, is a bit higher, mm. uh, nearly 9% or so percent uh, ahead. So we believe that in the end of the day, or at the end of the day, we'll win the race. Mr. Dankwa, we'll leave it here. Thank you. There is no doubt the December 7 elections were held as the most crucial one in Ghana's fourth Republican history. And with the antecedents of the 2020 polls where some eight lives were lost, the political tension remains palpable amidst comments by the incumbent. They will not hand over to the opposition. That commentary of whether or not the Akufuado government will hand over to a possible NDC government has become the subject of political contestation following a word of caution by the national chair of the NDC for the president or to the president uh, to announce his intention to do so.
We are heading towards a crucial election. You are wearing two caps. You are the leader of a party going into this contest, the new patriotic party. But more importantly, you are the current leader of Ghana. So even as your heart desires that your party will win elections, you have a bigger responsibility of making sure that there is a transparent, peaceful elections in Ghana and there is smooth transition to the incoming president without a drop of blood coming out. And so, Mr. President, we have four months now to go into elections. We have heard your message on the MPP platform. You are delivering as the leader of New Patriotic Party. We are yet to hear a clear message from you, Mr. President, committing yourself to a peaceful, fair, and transparent elections in Ghana, and committing yourself to respect the wishes of Ghanaians and putting yourself in readiness to hand over power peacefully to whoever is chosen by the good people of the Republic. Now, President Takufuado at a luncheon yesterday reiterated his commitment to oversee a peaceful election, arguing it remains his last challenge as president. Well, let's subject all of that to a bit more scrutiny this afternoon. Let's bring in the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Mustafa Gbande, on the present comments, which we will bring to you shortly. Mr. Gbande, uh, perhaps we can try one more time, see if we have that uh, sound clipping of the present at uh, that luncheon which Kamini was speaking to yesterday, having to do with his promise of handing over power uh, peacefully and leaving office as president. Right, we'll bring that to you shortly. I'm sure you've heard the president speak. Does it satisfy you as a party considering the demands you had made of the president? Okay, so thank you very much and good evening, good afternoon to our cherished listeners. Indeed, the, the, the best thing to do and the right thing to do is for a sitting president to demonstrate positive commitment and transitioning power peacefully. On the irony, most of the things President Akufado does is that he speaks on one breath and does the opposite. As we speak under his own supervision and appointment, the current Minister for Interior, Henry Corti, have been positioned to subvert security agencies for the purposes of rigging election 2024. They call it surprise attack. We in the NDP will the, not the, ask permission. Mr. Wande, these are matters we've not seen and cannot speak to. The yeah, question he, is quite simple and direct. You'd ask the president to openly state that he will hand over. He said that. Does that satisfy you in the NDC? It, it becomes more complex when you speak but does not have the iota of commitment to walk your, your talk. And I'm just telling you that currently as ongoing our recruitments into the security services without procedure. Okay? They call it um, surprise operations. All they want to do is to subvert security agencies to intimidate people during, during voting. And so when the president goes to mount a podium and say, I will hand over power, but position an interior minister who is compromising security, what is the commitment? Right, it does appear that uh, Mustafa Gbande is frozen there for a bit. It, let's let's hear, let's hear, let's hear from the from the president right now. Um, okay, Mr. Gbande, let's let's stay with you. Uh, you are frozen there a bit. You say that 
there is not commitment on the part of the president because the interior minister is allegedly engaged in circumventing the security apparatus of the country. We've seen the minority race concerns, uh, petition shrudge and the likes over this. Is it a case that you do not trust that a good enough job will be done between now and the elections to safeguard that recruitment process? No, all we needed to do now is to let people like yourselves and the entire nation know the preparatory mindset of this government to rig the 2024 election. But decide that we are ready to crush that strategy and to make sure that we go into a peaceful election. And I, we always tell President Akufado that if Ghanaians vote for His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, it will not be his wish to hand over. It will be by the dictates of the law. And he will not have a single opportunity of what he did in 2020, in 2024. We will not sleep for him to repeat same. If Ghanaians vote for a change, that change will be made manifest. There is nothing that can stop that mm. change. We know that security agencies are being circumvented by an interior minister. And those who matter are quiet and watching him to do so with the sole intention of causing violent undertones in an election. And nobody is talking about it. We will crash it, but maybe the spillover will affect certain individuals directly, like himself. Are, the are these, are the these comments not unwarranted, some would say? We're heading into an election where we're seeking to engender or ensure that peace prevails. You're speaking of crashing and the, the ripple effects affecting individuals and the likes. These are comments that you should not be making ahead of a crucial election like this, you'd we, agree. We, we, in the NDC, are committed to a peaceful election. We are doing all we can to make sure that there's a peaceful election. At least I do know that the NDC does not have a strategy of rigging an election against our opponent. These are, but if that these is are, what they are. These are allegations you continue to make. But when you begin to talk about they, crushing they not, individuals and the likes... They are, not, they are not allegations. Go and find out from the interior minister if he is doing recruitment or not. Find out from the security agencies if they are so involved. Find out the people who are being trained in various security installations put in national security just three days ago, a couple of them have been moved. We know all these because we have intelligence, and they know that we know. And so when the president comes to say things he's not committed to, then you are tempted to think if really the president is committed to a peaceful election. A peaceful election that will see to it that the right things are done. This is the same man who appointed politicians onto the board of the commission. We all know that. Right. This is the same man under whose regime uh, systems of elections are being compromised. Uh, computers are getting missing and all of that. So where is the trust? Where is the national consensus of credibility around the electioneering process? That is what the NDC is worried about. And I'm telling you that the interior minister currently positioned is subverting security power in order to cause some sort of uh, uh, traction towards themselves in the election. Points well made, Mr. Bad. Bandy. Points well that made. That is dangerous. And so you don't trust in the, in the words of the president. I appreciate that you could speak to us. That's Mustafa Bande. He's a deputy uh, general secretary of the opposition National Democratic Congress. We can now hear from the president uh, when he gave that assurance yesterday uh, to some senior citizens. The last major challenge for me is to preside over peaceful and fair elections in December. That is a commitment that with the help of all Ghanaians, I intend to realize. 